Welcome to Thurwood Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. Happy opening day. We have moved eight miles west to Gulfstream Park West and are beginning the Fall Turf Festival today. We've got a 10 race card on tap as our 44 race day meet begins. It is going to be so much fun. Plus, we have brand new wagering offerings, including a rolling super high five, an early pick five, and a quinella in the last race each and every racing day. Let's get things started here are the track and weather conditions now that we're in Miami Gardens. We start the day with a fast main track and a firm turf course. The first race of the Gulfstream Park Fall Turf Festival meeting is an $8,000 claimer. Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the nine. That's your main track only participant, Flashjack. The 2015 Fall Turf Festival is underway, racing at Gulfstream Park West. From the outside, Wove begins the best and will try to clear the field, and she's done it already. Leads it by a length and a quarter from Trumpet's Eminence, who moves up from the outside. Just Call Me Money is away, racing in third length, better than Gracious Schumer, who's now fourth. She's in front of June Flower, who's fifth and about five off the lead. Stretch of another five lengths back to Oxidian, then Hoboken and Honey, and the trailer is Ariel's Flyer. They take it around the far turn and Wove shows the way. Leads it by a length and three quarters. Trumpet's Eminence is there second. Gracious Schumer on the outside third. Tucked in fourth. Just Call Me Money. Five lengths off the lead. And from between horses, June Flower. Then it's Oxidian off the top of the turn. Wove drifts a bit wide. Trumpet Eminence punching up the inside and out the hedge. That's Just Call Me Money coming on. June Flower tries to split rivals and there's an eighth of a mile to go. It's Wove on top. June Flower to the inside of Trumpet's Eminence trying to get up into second. But Wove is holding gamely. It will be wove to kick off the Wednesday program by a length and a quarter. Second trumpet's eminence from June Flower third and 57 and four. Wove holds on to take the first race. Marcos Meneses was aboard for trainer Antonio Sano and owners the three Maria's Racing Stable. Wove gets a win off just four days of rest and she pays $6.60 to win today's opener. The second race is a $20,000 mating claimer. Three-year-olds and up will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. They're up. From the center, Phyllis Cetes gets the first call. Glamorgan on the outside, and here's Ausable moving up from down toward the inside. At the rail, that's Quinnetuckwood, who's now racing on to be third. From fourth is El Gran Gallego, then in between horses, the first-timer Spark to Shark, and it's three lengths to the trailer Glacial Ocean. Down the back stretch they go, and Ausable has now worked clear to lead it by a neck over Felicites, who's alongside second. They're a length and a half in front of Quinny Tuckwood, who's racing in third for McIntosh. He's two better than El Gran Gallego, who's fighting the dirt in his face. There he's racing in fourth while trying to get into the clear. Spark to Shark tries to move up and around Glamorgan, and the trailer is Glacial Ocean. They run around the far turn. Whip is out on Felicites, so Ausable travels the best. Less than five sixteenths to go with Ausable in front by a neck. Felicites comes right back at him from second. These two have uh, opened now six or seven on El Gran Gallego and along the inside it's Quinny Tuckwit. they're at the top of the stretch 45 and two for a half mile now the whip is out on Ausable but he has a three length break on Felicites down the outside in El Gran Gallego up the inside Quinny Tuckwit. final furlong now and on top it's still Ausable Ausable well clear at the 16th pole he's four in front Quinny Tuckwit rallies up the inside of Felicites Ausable and Gonzalez easily by four Quinny Tuckwit up for second in front of Felicites third and El Gran Gallego finish fourth in 111 and two. Possible kicks clear to take the second race. The three-year-old gelding leads them all the way under Jonathan Gonzalez to get the win for trainer David Passan. The winning owners of Bucketless Stables Inc. Ossible returned $4.80 for his victory. Shaman goes down the outside. Shaman goes chasing Danish Dynaforma. Danish Dynaforma, Shaman Ghost, and Shaman Ghost takes the Queen's Plate a length. And taking the 156th running of the Queen's Plate is Shaman Ghost, beautifully bred by Ghost Zapper. Classic Bloodlines, Classic Sire, Ghost Zapper, standing at Adina Springs. The third race is a $10,000 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds and up will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. A field of nine will go to the post. Zero. 
from the outside, Rocket Boulevard commences the best. Just to his inside, abandoned ship is away on the top flight. Driving it up on the inside, first-timer Sinister Blue. Sinister Blue moved, now moves to try to take the early lead. Russian Humor is away on the top flight, and Splitting Horses now to be third is never in trouble. Indie Artist is wide on the course, and then it's a length and a half back to Grandpa's King. There's two and a half clear of Drimmer, and the trailer is Mike the Bear. Log jam up top. The leader, Sinister Blue, through an opening quarter in 22 and 2. From between horses, never in trouble, is now second. Indie Artist on the outside, third. Whip is out on Rocket Boulevard with Russian Humor on the inside and abandoned ship wide on the course. It's two lengths back to Grandpa's King, who tries to kickstart a rally in front of Drimmer, then Mike the Bear. They run around the far turn. There's three ho horses across the track, and they've opened on the rest. From between them, never in trouble. Widest of all, Indie Artist. And along the inside, the first timer is still there, Sinister Blue. They've opened and four on Grandpa's King with three sixteenths left to go. James Vale on Sinister Blue has a narrow lead. Never in trouble. Alongside second and from the back, Grandpa's King down the center and Drimmer's coming on late inside that final sixteenth. Never in trouble. Up for a short lead. Far outside Drimmer from between horses, Grandpa's King. But to the wire, it's never in trouble. He's a winner. It's very close for second. Sinister Blue inside, charging hard late was Grandpa's King and one twelve and three. Never in trouble rallies to take the third race. Octavio Vergara Jr. was aboard for trainer Dennis Manning and owners Flea Market Racing. Never in trouble returned twenty to two dollars to win. On to the fourth race now. This is an eight thousand dollar claimer. Three year olds and up, which have not won two races, will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Eight are lined up here. And they're up. From the outside, Dr. J-Dub begins nicely. Back to values is showing speed. Hippie slippers away in the top flight. And Fugazi Boy drives up from on the inside. He's now third and he's the length behind. Stretch of three to Abran Paso, who sets up a good spot from fifth. About six off the lead now. Three and a half lengths better than Jemson with excellent prospect riding the hedge. And trailing the field is Private Journal. They move into the far turn now, and on the outside, Dr. J-Dub tries to put ahead in front. Back to values is right alongside second. These two have now opened three and a half lengths on Hippie Slippers with Fugazi Boy along the inside. Abron Paso has fallen off those six lengths off the lead now with excellent prospect inside of him, and they're at the top of the stretch. Back to values, a narrow leader, Dr. J-Dub right alongside second. These two four better than a Fugazi Boy with excellent prospect. Through the final furlong, Dr. J-Dub now has the lead and starts to edge away. Back to values is clearly second. Jemsum splitting horses late. Dr. J-Dub to prevail. Back to value second. Jemsum third. And Abron Paso was fourth. Five furlongs on turf and 57 and two. Dr. J-Dub draws off to take the fourth race. The favorite gets the job done today under Tyler Gaffleon. Carlo Vacareza was the winning trainer for owners J&J &J Stables LLC and Priscilla Vacareza. On to the fifth and now a $16,000 main and claimer. Two-year-old fillies will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. No scratches, but a couple other changes to report. Pedro Cotto Jr. will be on the four. Marcos Meneses will be on the six. And Blinkers on the eight. And they're up. From the outside, Ashipu begins nicely. Moving with her in the early stages is Jamie's good. Raised to be a warrior joins the vanguard. And at the rail, Grand Chama moves up. So it's the inside pair, raised to be a warrior and Grand Chama, 1-2. Ashipu wide on the course and from between horses, it's under my skin. Then it's a length to Jamie's Good, following her as she's a Hellcat. Two and a half lengths to Miss Niagara, out wide on the course has gone to Dixie. Then it's Be Sure Lisa, she's third last. Second last is Quinta Tata and the trailer is Drama Princess. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Raised to be a warrior, three furlongs from home and a length and a half in front. Ashipu working harder but getting a bit closer second. Under My Skin is now third at the 5 16th. Down to the rail, it's Grand Chama with Jamie's Good next, and they run to the top of the stretch. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Raised to be a warrior, and Amasiel Aramillo off the top of the turn. Widening now, they've opened a three and a half length lead. Ashipu is there, second, three better than Grand Chama and Under My Skin with an eighth of a mile to go. Raised to be a warrior is well clear. It's Raised to be a warrior who will kick off the Rainbow Six with an emphatic win. It's five or six in front and still moving away. Ashipu second, Grand Chama third, and Drama Princess got up to be fourth. Raised to be a warrior is much the best in the fifth race. She breaks her maiden today for trainer Martin Parano and owners Arialano Noguez Morales.
A Misael Jaramillo was aboard, raised to be a warrior, paid $13.40 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. The sixth race is a $12,500 meeting claimer. Three-year-olds and up will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. One change to note, blinkers off the three, rising creek. They're up. From the outside, Key Royale and Majestic Kingdom begin nicely. Just to their inside, Rapid Lightning is showing, showing speed on the stretch out. And from down toward the inside, Rising Creek is away in the top flight. And so is Executive Mandate. So five of the eight of them wanted part of the early lead. Little Kama settles back third last. Second last on the outside, Starship Advocate. And the early trailer here is Darnell's Spirit. They run around the first turn, and now on top, it's the stretch out speed of Rapid Lightning and Winston K, who open up now by three. Up on the outside, Majestic Kingdom has now got back into second. From the inside, Executive Mandate is racing in third. Key Royale on the outside is fourth. Two lengths better than Little Kama, who moves between horses with Starship Advocate on the outside. To the inside of that pair is Rising Creek, and Darnell Spirit is last, but a bit closer. Spots about six lengths off the lead, with less than half a mile to go. It went through the opening half mile in 47 and 4 after an opening quarter that was covered in 24 seconds. And here's Majestic Kingdom bidding up on the outside to take the lead. Back to second is Rapid Lightning, but Key Royale moves to the leader on the outside. And here's Key Royale, Darnell Spirit from last and into fourth. Also moving up, Little Kama and Starship Advocate is wide on the outside. Top of the lane, Key Royale sets sail for the money under Carabao from Majestic Kingdom, who tries to fight back second. Off the fence, it's Darnell Spirit. He's 50 to 1, and he's coming on. Indeed stretch it's still on top key royale but darnell spirit has momentum darnell spirit on the outside takes the lead and it's a hundred and four dollar shocker darnell spirit at 50 to one key royale second little comma third and majestic kingdom was fourth darnell spirit gets by kill royale to take the sixth race james vale was the winning rider for trainer ian hemingway and owner frank ford Darnell Spirit paid $119 to win today. He was a 50 to one long shot. Race number seven is a $16,000 meeting claimer. Two year olds will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. One more note for you, no Lasix on the two, Carupano. And they're up. Modest Mike hopped in the air at the beginning, but still maintains a narrow lead out of the chute there. Moving between horses is Partagas Way. Partagas Way now puts ahead in front. Modest Mike from the far outside now assumes control again. And on heels and backing up to be fifth early is Inky Dinky Doo. Moving up and by him on the inside of the leader is Caribbean Spirit, who's trying to get to the lead. So it's a real scramble for the early lead. Caribbean Spirit leads narrowly from Modest Mike, who races in second. On the inside, that's Grand Tapoy. Now third, Partagas Way is back fourth. Up on the outside, it's Inky Dinky Doo. They're followed a length behind by... Uh, uh, that's El Señor de los Cielos, who's moving up now. Easy for me to say, a half length in front of Heist Coffee with Hard Nut to Crack on the outside. Hard Nut to Crack is racing about seven lengths off the lead and splitting horses Carapano. The two at the back down to the inside is Black Dart and dropping to trail Idle Runner. They run to the top of the stretch now and it's wide open. Five horses across the racetrack and it's the first timer, El Señor de los Cielos, who has the lead at the eighth pole. But moving to him on the outside is Carapano and now Carapano's in front after I got the name of the runner-up on there. Inky Dinky Doo is third. Partagas Way is fourth. Then it's Grand Tapoy, but Carapano's a winner. Carapano and Carabao wrapped up in four and a half in front. Second is El Señor de los Cielos. And up third is Partagas Way. Carapano cruises in the seventh race. He breaks his main today in his fifth career start for trainer Rodolfo Garcia and Coroni Stable, Inc. Jose Carabao was the winning rider. 
The eighth race is a $25 to $30,000 claimer. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the main track. The rain is start to come down here at Gulfstream Park West, and we have moved this race from the turf course to a sloppy main track. Scratch the four and the seven. They're off. From the inside, Arch in the Park uh, commences well. So does Fear the Falcon. So the two favorites get acquainted in the early stages. Fox Chase is away racing in third. Krishi is next. Very wide run. Saichi floated out by Tutti Sano. And the one save growing on the inside is Son of a Preacher. Son of a Preacher moves up to be third behind the embattled pace setters. Those pace setters are Arch in the Park on the inside and Fear the Falcon on the outside. They're heads apart. They're two lengths better than the trio of Krishi, Tutti Sano, and Son of a Preacher. Stretch of three to Fox Chase and two more to the trailer Run Saichi. They carved a quarter in 24 and one-fifth of a second. Down the back stretch they go. On top, Fear the Falcon just narrowly. Arch in the Park has chirped along to keep pace second. Racing in third, he's had a good run of it as the third runner, son of a preacher, two lengths off the lead. Krishi is outside of him. Coming under the whip ride is Tutti Sano, racing about four lengths behind while racing fifth, five better than Fox Chase and Run Saichi. They move into the far turn, and on top now, Fear the Falcon gets away. From the outside, Krishi is now second. It's an open five or six as Arch in the Park got out a bit on that far turn run and is now being pulled out of the race. So here's Krishi to take on Fear the Falcon to the top of the stretch run. These two have opened six on Son of a Preacher, and there's a quarter of a mile to go. Krishi on the outside runs on to take the lead. Fear the Falcon tries to fight back second. Son of a Preacher is now third for Fox Chase fourth with three sixteenths to go. The leader is Krishi, moves away by two. Fear the Falcon, Gaffleone gets him to the outside to try to re-rally with an eighth of a mile to go. But that's only a hope, and that hope is uh, shrinking quickly as Krishy's moving clear. This is going to be Krishy and Pedro Monterey Jr. winning and winning easily. They're five or six in front and still moving off. Run Saichi got up for second. Fear the Falcon third from Son of a Preacher fourth. Sloppy track specialist Chrissy gets the victory in the eighth race. This is his second win in a row for trainer Pedro Posadas and owner Jack Cannon. Pedro Monterey Jr. was the winning rider. Chrissy paid $30.20 to win. Ninth race is an allowance. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. A full field of 11 will go to the post. And they're up. From the outside, the Royal Boot wins the break and will lead the field early. Moving to her inside is Midnight Dream to try to challenge for the lead. From the far outside, Mochima's away racing in third. Then it's Lasting Friendships, followed inside by Lucky Twitch and Hope Faith Joy, who's along the rail. It's a length and a half to Moonlit Matinee, followed by Jamie's Dancer. Then they're racing third, last awfully shake. It's another two lengths back to Miss Away, and at the back, the trailer, Ghost of Anapa. They make their way down the back stretch and past the half mile pole, separated by seven and a half lengths. And on top, it's the Royal Boot narrowly. Midnight Dream comes to call on the outside, second, lasting friendships off the speed while third from Mochima, who races in fourth. Moonlight Matinee is next. From the inside, Jamie's Dancer begins a run. Lucky Twitch and uh, on the inside, Hope Faith Joy. They both need to do better as they run to the top of the stretch. Midnight Dream is the one to beat. Midnight Dream and Jonathan Gonzalez off the top of the turn. Leaded by two and a half lengths. Lasting Friendships trying to get after and toward the rail. The Royal Boot. Jamie's Dancer is coming on late. Inside the final furlong, Midnight Dream on the lead by three. Lasting Friendships is second. Jamie's Dancer is third from the far outside and gaining ground late. Here's Awfully Shake and the 16th pole, Midnight Dreams, the leader, Midnight Dreams, hanging on. Awfully shake, finished full of run to be second in front of Lasting Friendship's third, then Jamie's Dancer and Lucky Switch. Midnight Dream cannot be caught in the ninth race. Jonathan Gonzalez was aboard for trainer Gustavo Delgado and owners Los Samanes, LLC. The 10th and final race on today's program is a $35,000 mating claimer. 
two-year-olds will be going a mile and a 16th on the main track. This race was originally scheduled to be run on the turf course, but was moved to a sloppy main track. Scratch the four, the 11, and the 14. And runners away. From the center, Dreaming of DeWild begins nicely. Toward the rail, Bohemian Soul moves up. From the top shelf, Freedom for DLT is showing speed today. So is Spike Chevious. And alongside them, High Mischief. So there's four across the track in the run of the first turn. With inside position and the lead, it's Bohemian Soul. Three parts of a length to Spike Chevious, who races in second. By George, he did it. Saved ground nicely. He's moved up to be third, and he's still getting closer. With Freedom for DLT, you're now in racing in fourth. From behind the speed fifth is Scalpine, situated about three lengths off the lead. Three wide through the initial stages is Dramadon and High Mischief between horses. Then it's a length back to Unspoken Quality, Dreaming of the Wild along the inside, and the early trailer is West Shore Drive. They run down the back stretch. They're chasing the speed of Bohemian Soul and Jaramillo on top by two. Racing in second position is by Georgie Did It, Spike Chevious is next, and Scalpine moves nicely between horses. Wide on the course is Freedom for DLT. It's a stretch of two and a half lengths back to unspoken quality. In between them, High Mischief. Running on from the back now, here's the first timer, West Shore Drive, picking a path outside for Carabao and closing ranks as they run around the far turn three-eighths of a mile away. They went through the opening half mile in 49 seconds flat. Bohemian Soul has the lead. Continuing to catch the eye here is West Shore Drive. He's roaring up on the yacht side, and he's now into third. He's continuing to close ground. West Shore Drive, the one to beat off the top of the turn. From the back, Unspoken Quality also putting in a run, and Bohemian Soul hanging tough. Spike Chevious along the inside with three sixteenths to go. This one's over. West Shore Drive inside the final furlong with a long, sustained run from the back, and he's pulling clear nicely. Here's a Chad Stewart debut winner. Here's West Shore Drive and Jose Caraballo wrapped up and moving off to win the Wednesday finale by seven or eight. Unspoken quality second, Spike Chevy is third, close for fourth between Freedom for DLT or Scalpine in 150. West Shore Drive, the only first-time starter in this race, gets the victory in his career debut for trainer Chad Stewart. Jose Carroll Bayo gets his second victory of the day, the winning owner, Robert C. Rocky Jr. West Shore Drive paid $35.60 to win. And here's how our exotic wagers paid today. The pick four, four of four, $119.45. The rainbow six, no one picked six of six, five of six, paid $173.90. The carryover for Thursday's program in the rainbow six, $1,603.92. That's going to do it for Wednesday's program and our opening day action here at Gulfstream Park West. But the fun and the racing continue tomorrow on Thursday. We've got another 10 race program set to kick off at 1.15 p.m. The feature is the ninth. It's a six fernal allowance on the main track for Phillies and Mares. The race includes Emerald Citadel, who's going to be the speed of the speed, looking to recapture the form she displayed when cruising by five and a half lengths. Two starts back on August 7th. She is going to have to deal with Hannah Lee Haley from the David Fox Barn who returned and made her second start off an extended layoff to be a pretty impressive winner in her own right in an allowance in her last start. It's a very competitive race and a good one. And of course, you don't want to miss any of the action here at Gulfstream Park West for the second annual Fall Turf Festival. I'll see you back here tomorrow for all of us here at Gulfstream Park West. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action. I'm Katie Stazak.